Hello everyone, and welcome back to the NPC Dungeon. I am your host and Game Master for the time being, as always. And today, it's story time again. I have a short but funny and lighthearted little story about a player who only wanted to catch some sleep. So what happened? Now, as a quick side note, and before I begin, as DMs and GMs, we like to mess with our players a little bit and turn their backstories against them and put little pranks on them and stuff like that, and that's fine as long as you have that conversation ahead of time. And that's fine as long as you warn them, as long as you make sure they're okay with it, and as long as you don't get too unfair about it. But this isn't a DM GM help episode, this is a story. I just wanted to say that because this episode involves me pulling a bit of a prank on one of my players. And I just felt like that was a super important thing to say, an important thing to practice as a DM or a GM. Anyway, onward with the story. So, for a little bit of context, my players were wrongfully accused of a crime they didn't commit by a particularly powerful and seemingly shady NPC that had apparently gone a little mad with power. As a result, they were sent to a prison in an icy tundra located near the southern shore of the world that I'd created for them, and locked away there. After a few days, they were able to make a daring escape, stealing an airship along the way, and seeking an audience with a moss training guild that was located nearby and was capable of clearing the records of its members. But you had to be a member in order to receive this service. So they made the journey there, received their initiation assignment, and set out to slay a monster for them as they trudged through the snowy land. This particular monster was a large centipede-like creature called a Remorhaz that lived in the snow near an old and long since abandoned dwarven catacombs that had fallen into disrepair. But this story isn't really about the monster. It's about what happened on the way to the monster. After making their way past a giant that guarded a narrow mountain pass on their route there, which they defeated when two of my players polymorphed into young dragons and swooped down overhead, crossing it over with their lightning and fire breath, they were about due for a rest. They flew through the mountain range, the rest of the party riding on the backs of the two that had polymorphed into dragons, and landed in a wide open, flat, snowy expanse as night descended upon them. They laid down for a long rest and soon were all asleep, all except for the dragonborn paladin, Creeve who had decided to keep watch that night. He looked up out of the sky and was amazed to see a beautiful display of shimmering lights all glowing brilliantly in shades of blue and green, and he allowed himself to become a little distracted for a moment as the lights suddenly vanished, replaced by tiny giggles chuggling lightly in his ear. He returned to his post, feeling more than a little foolish and grateful that no one was awake to see that, but also a little lighter. He looked down to find that a javelin that he had just recently purchased had disappeared as well, and as if on cue, the giggles returned. This time, he wouldn't be fooled so easily. He rose to his feet and marched toward the sounds in a furious haze, leaving the sleeping party members alone and vulnerable for a moment. He followed the laughter to the edge of a cliff face overlooking the side of the ice shelf they had found themselves camped upon. Just over the edge, three points of sparkling green light the shape of tiny humanoids floated over and around a shining metal javelin. He recognized it immediately. It was the very same one he'd lost, the very same one they had apparently stolen from him. So, not seeing any other options, he uncoiled his rope from his side, tied off the end, and hurled it at the scene, trying to lasso the javelin. The rope flew through the air, wrapped around the weapon, and passed through its illusory surface. The laughter rose up around him once more, then faded, leaving him empty-handed. Understandably downcast at his recent loss, he turned around and trudged back to the camp. Meanwhile, back at their camp, one of his party members, a blue ooze named 57 who condensed himself down and slept in a bucket, awoke to the sounds of a sickening groan and reformed his head from his slimy body to raise up and look out into the darkness. The first thing that he noticed was that his dragonborn friend was no longer there. And the second thing that he noticed was a collective group of three little mounds of snow shuffling toward them. He tried a silently hesitant greeting, but only received another groan in response. By the time he woke up, another one of the party members, a changeling warlock named V, short for Viamis, the mountain lost all their snow, revealing three dwarven zombies still creeping toward them, apparently trying and failing to stay hidden. Trying to suppress a chuckle, V spoke to them telepathically, asking them who they were. And to his surprise, one, but only one, spoke up in response. His speech was slow and monotone and unrehearsed, and the other two had already forgotten how to speak and were slowly beginning to lose whatever humanity was still left in them. From what he could gather, they'd come from the catacombs that he and the rest of his party were adventuring toward, but they couldn't remember much about their lives or their past or really anything else about themselves. V knew a little bit about what it was like to lose everything. So, much to the chagrin of the rest of his party, he agreed to contact an artificer he knew to try to help the dwarves build new bodies for themselves. 
And seeing that their lookout had disappeared, he decided to stay up and stand guard as the rest of the group slept, making conversation with the party's new companions. He watched as one of the dwarves' eyes widened with excitement as he enabled him to taste for the first time in what must have been hundreds of years the taste of warm grains of freshly baked bread through the use of a well-spent prestidigitation spell. And it wasn't long before Creeve marched back into camp, ready to lie back down and sleep and try to forget about this little run-in he had with Pixies. When he saw three zombies sitting around with the rest of the party, he shouted in fright, drawing his mace as V raised his hand and told him, Relax, they're with us. Creeve scoffed, rolled over in his blanket, and rolled his eyes, not unsurprised at V's antics. What's your problem? asked V. And where are you at anyway? Don't ask. And he immediately fell asleep. However, while Kree was falling asleep, leaving V awake by himself, another one of the party's warlocks, another dragonborn, this one named Ampirin, began to stir to the sounds of commotion going on around them and instinctively fired off an eldritch blast at one of the zombies. It failed in hitting the zombie, crashing into a nearby wall of ice, but it succeeded in awaking the rest of the party for the second time that night. Needless to say, they were a little upset. Why would you do that? 57 yelled, his gelatinous body vibrating with frustration. They're with us. I didn't know that, and Pierre replied, I was asleep. Fair point, said V, trying to play peacemaker with the rest of the party until they fell asleep, but one didn't go back to sleep. As you might have guessed, Creve couldn't. He lied awake that night and looked beside him, spotting medium-sized humanoid footprints in the snow leading from his side out into the dark. He snuck off just out of V's line of sight and disappeared into the night. He followed the footprints until the trail ended, and the footprints around him disappeared. Standing now across from him was a being made up of pure shadow. It lumbered at about Beeve's own size and hailed his javelin at his side. It looked up, tossed to the ground, and stalked forward. Kreev had since given up any hope of regaining his lost javelin, but to see it right there in front of him, once again, he charged forward, igniting his mace into flames and swung after the shadow once, a second time, but both shots missed widely. The shadow made it to Kreev and pressed his hand into his shoulder, sending pain piercing into his mind. Kreev roared against it and went in with a howling battle cry for two more strikes, but he couldn't hit this thing. The shadow kept his icy hold on him as V emerged from the camp, hearing Kreev's shouts of pain and frustration, and looked on. He looked down, his foot catching on something and saw Kreev's javelin on the ground just where the shadow had dropped it. He picked it up, cocked an eyebrow, and smirked at the scene before him. He'd been doing that a lot that night and really was enjoying himself. Having fun there, he asked. What do you mean having fun? This weird shadow thing is trying to kill me. Care to help? I'm sorry, what weird shadow thing? There's nothing there. What? I'm telling you, there's nothing there. Uh, don't tell me, Kreev groaned as he reached out and pressed his hand through the shadow. It dissipated, an illusion. The same laughter rose up around him again as he turned back once more and yanked his javelin out of V's hand. Now, are they going to tell me what happened? V asked Kreev as he trotted back to camp. Pixies, was all Kreev could say as he laid back down inside. The sun was already rising in the sky, and V, his good mood still not yet gone, pressed to digitate the sound of a bugle to wake everyone up. Kreev winced at the noise, squinted at the sunlight, and picked himself up. He shuffled ahead with the rest of the group, but he wasn't even the littlest bit ready for the rest of what the journey had to offer. So that one was a little different from the rest of the stories that I'd been telling lately. One of the reasons for that is that I had another story planned, but then this happened and I didn't want to pass up the chance to tell it. There are also other events that happened before and after this story that are kind of related to it in many ways I might tell later as well, but I'll keep it to this for now. And as I said at the beginning, this one did end up being a little short, but I hope you still enjoyed it, as well as little twists and turns, and as always, until next time, let's learn something.